Today is October 25th, 2016, and I'm interviewing Dale White at Tremont Ridge in Hillsboro. Dale is 87 years old, having been born on March 31st, 1929. My name is Sue Burkholder, and I will be the interviewer. Dale, would you please state for the recording in what war and branch of service that you served? Korean. Um, I really enlisted for uh, three years, and when the Korean War started uh, in June of 51, I believe, they extended everybody's enlistment one year, so I got out in 52 instead of 51. Okay. And what branch of service were you in? Were you in the Navy? U.S. Navy. Navy? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, would you tell us just a little bit about where you were born and um, maybe about your parents? Well, I was born in, actually in Hilbert Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was Wilbur White and my mother was... Uh, Zalma Kalk, uh, and I've got lots of relatives. On my father's side, there was 11, and on my mother's side, there was 12. <laughs> so I got lots of cousins. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and what did your parents, what was your dad's occupation? Well, he worked at... Uh, uh, the smelter in Hilbert for a while, but in uh, 1947 he bought a farm and went to farming, and mm -hmm. and which that's what I done after I got out of the Navy was uh, come home and farmed, and and uh, I got married in 1954 on June 27th. And wife and I had two kids, Susan and Dan. Susan was born in 1957, and Dan in 1961. Um, and now I've got three grandkids, uh, Megan is a daughter of Sue and Nick and Morgan is a son and daughter of Dan and Michelle um, and Megan I've got three great grandsons and from Nick I've got one great granddaughter which I'm really proud of. Um, did you have any siblings? Yeah, I had uh, two brothers. Jim was uh, uh, oh, a little over a year younger than me, and then Don was uh, nine years younger. And uh, I went to Irving High School, which was a three-year high school, and then. Uh, my senior year, I went, either had an option of going to Hillsborough or Witt, and you didn't have to pay any tuition that way. Uh, so most of the people went to uh, Hillsborough, mm -hmm. but there was a few that went to Witt, but mm -hmm. not very many. Most of them preferred Hillsborough. Did any of your family, other families, serve in the military? Oh, yeah. Uh, both brothers, Jim was in the Army, and Don was in the Air Force, and uh, uh, Don met his wife down there uh, and uh, brought her back to Illinois, mm -hmm. and Jim married um, a girl that he went with from high school, and uh, and then of course I married 
Francis Ricky, and uh, we had 59 years, and we're really looking forward to number 60, but I lost her in a automobile accident three years ago, and that's the damnedest thing that ever happened to me. I still can't some kind of wonder why it happened, mm. uh, but it did. Hmm. Um, what was your occupation and what did you do before you went in the service? Or did you just go in right out of high school? No, when I got out of high school, uh, first thing I'd done, I had three uncles in Detroit, Michigan, and I went up there and got a job in uh, United States Rubber Company, and then uh, um, <laughs> I was there well, in November of 47, they laid everybody off that didn't have six months, and I liked four days to have my <laughs> six months, so I just come on back to Irving and my uh, uh, two uncles, Lamar and Kenneth Calk, had um, milk routes back then. You go around to the country and pick up cans of milk, you know. Well, I started doing that in, in the spring of 48, and I'd done that until uh, June of 48 when I joined the Navy and then also helped dad on a farm. And then uh, when I come back from the Navy, why, um, I helped dad on a farm and, and uh, we started off with um, about 340 acres that we owned and rented. And, uh, um, when Don come home from Texas, uh, we started farming, and uh, you know we started buying some ground, and mm -hmm. and uh, um, we uh, buy one farm and get it about paid for and we'd buy another one and, and uh, we ended up with, oh, I don't remember, something over a thousand acres. But of course we rented some and when I retired from farming in 91, uh, Don and I was farming about 2,200 acres. And then when I retired, why, uh, my son and son-in-law uh, started together mm -hmm. and uh, they named her they wanted a name for their farm so uh, I told them what beautiful sunsets that the wife and I had seen mm -hmm. in our lifetime there you know and um, so they named it Sunset Farms and it's still in operation today. And today they're farming about 3,000 acres. So, uh, but I imagine that'd be about as far as they go because Dan's getting old enough that he's going to be one of slowing down instead of <laughs> adding to it, you know. So, sure. but, uh, but I'm really thankful that uh, Nick, uh, Dan's son, really took an interest in the farm. He, he graduated from uh, college at Carbondale, and then he come back and, and is farming now, and, and and they're they're both of them doing an excellent job, and and they got a, a hired hand that uh, that went to school with Nick, and uh, he's an excellent worker. Um, So, um, 
did your family, um, were they in favor of you joining the military? Were they okay with that? I guess. <laughs> I really don't know. I didn't ask didn't him. Ask. I just told him I was going to. Yeah. And you enlisted? Yeah. Yes. Really, when I got out of high school, I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I went to uh, uh, Navy and got back home. And I had a chance of uh, driving a bus from St. Louis to uh, Memphis mm -hmm. uh, with Trailways Bus Company. But I talked and I talked to Dad about that, and he said, "Well, he said I can't tell you what to do, but he said I tell you you'll be better off uh, by staying on the farm. You be your own boss, and he said whenever you retire, you'll be worth more than if you did it on the bus, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I done and." And uh, uh, I farmed until, uh, well, I retired in 91, but I didn't really quit farming. I just helped boys uh, uh, all I'd done after I retired was just work ground and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in, in the spring of the year, in the fall of the year, um, I drove the uh, grain cart and we unloaded grain right on the run, you know, the combine never stopped. And uh, I, I enjoyed that. And uh, hmm. I lose my train of thought sometimes. I forget where I was at. Well, it sounds like you were um, you know, just stayed, family stayed together and, and got done what needed to be done on the farm. Yeah, that's yes. right. Okay. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit about, you said you enlisted, um, and what was it like those first few days of basic training when you went? Uh, I, I really can't tell you, the only thing I can remember about basic training was um, right across the uh, fence. There was just a chain link fence between us and the Marines. Mm -hmm. And we was always thankful that we wasn't in the Marines. <laughs> Cause why is that? Th those boys went through a lot more than what we did. Uh, you know, we had to air our mattresses every Saturday on the fence and, and uh, uh, and then we was off for the day, you know, mm -hmm. but um, not the Marines. <laughs> They'd done something every day. Okay. Wow. And, uh, well, what do you remember about basic training? Do you, was it, did you um, have memorable instructors that you remember, or how was the experience for you? Well, We had a chief petty officer, boatswain mate. Uh, he was really a good instructor. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I lost it again. Well, you had um, a good instructor then. What, what did you do during basic training. Do you remember oh, anything lot. memorable? Yeah, a lot of marching. And uh, I got to where I really enjoyed the marching. Mm -hmm. marching. But uh, one thing I remember was you get up every morning and go out and stand on asphalt um, and line up for breakfast, which I wasn't used to. <laughs> I didn't care for that. Uh, but, uh, Do you remember how the food was during basic training? Was it good? Oh yeah, I, I, I didn't have any 
complaints about food. Uh, the fact is, when I was at uh, Whidbey Island, there was a guy, uh, he was a cook, uh, that was from the next town from us, and, and uh, he always, uh, back then we had a uh, rabbit, mm -hmm. and uh, the back of the rabbit was just almost like white meat on chicken, you know, and mm -hmm. he'd send me back to the barracks with a bread sack full of that one piece, <laughs> a bunch of them, you know, and I took back to the barracks and had with uh, the rest of the guys there, because I was stationed uh, when I was at um, Whidbey Island, I was stationed in uh, the Transportation Division, mm -hmm. and um, we was was not stationed with the our barracks. We had our own barracks, mm -hmm. and it wasn't around the rest of the guys so much. And mm -hmm. and um, uh, also uh, when I um, was in a, uh, uh, got a job there that I really enjoyed. Um, they had a, a garden mail run that went from um, Whidbey Island to the Naval Station in Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't remember, I was trying to think while I go, I don't remember whether that went every day or um, I, I really don't remember whether it went every day or not but anyway whenever it went well that was my job and and I got to know the um, city uh, of um, Seattle about like the palm of my hand <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoyed that 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 was a uh, Whidbey Island was about 90 miles um, from uh, north of Seattle. Mm -hmm. So, um, other than uh, in the transportation department, what were other duties that you might have done? Well, now that's where uh, I drove a bus mm -hmm. just uh, on the station, you know, because uh, uh, Whidbey Island was uh, had two different bases. There was Alt Field is where the planes was at, mm -hmm. and then they had a barracks and um, uh, I believe they call that the Alt Field side. Uh, but that was where the barracks was and our transportation department was there. and. Uh, Hmm. Okay, so you drove a bus and... Oh yeah, that's that's where I got mm -hmm. uh, to driving a bus and the reason that uh, when I got home there was a guy there in town that he seen me when I got home and he said, Dale, he said, there's a run from St. Louis to Memphis open. And he said, if you want it, I can see that you get it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I told you I went home, talked to Dad, and decided to stay on the farm, mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad I did. Sure. Sure. Was, uh, uh, one thing I enjoyed was like what Dad said, I was my own boss all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something sure. didn't, get, uh, didn't get done, that was my fault. Sure. sure. And uh, I enjoyed that. So how long were you in Washington? Uh, well, I spent about a year at at um, uh, Alameda, and then the whole squadron moved to uh, Woodby Island, and I was there probably uh, a year and a half, maybe a little bit longer. I, I really don't remember for sure, but uh, then the squadron moved again. Uh, from Whidbey Island to uh, Wine Islands and uh, uh, Transportation Division, I, I was on uh, 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 
stationed at Hickam Field. Is that on Oahu? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what did you do there? Uh, drove a gas truck, refueled the planes, uh, and then um, when that guard duty um, job come up, uh, I don't know why, but I'm thankful they did. They, they uh, I didn't apply for it or anything. They just one asked me if I wanted it, and I, of course I said yeah. And uh, why they took put me, I don't know, <laughs> but they did. And so that was guard duty. So what did you do during that time? Uh, I, I don't. I don't remember. Um, I know I stood a little bit of guard duty, but not very much. Uh, being in the transportation division, you was kind of off by yourself, and and uh, really didn't. You stuck pretty well to that, you know. And, uh, um, so it was, and um, this was during the Korean War time period, correct? Right. And did you ever um, see combat or go to? To no. anywhere other than no no nope. no okay. uh, no the only way I could have got board ship I think is is if the uh, division was transferred to uh, an aircraft carrier mm -hmm. but that never happened mm -hmm. uh, when you're in Navy you got to spend uh, so many months out of the year somehow or the other on um, sea duty, mm -hmm. but when I went to Wild Islands, that was considered my sea duty. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent uh, something over a year there, uh, but that was my sea duty. So I really never uh, got aboard ship, which I would have liked to have done, but I didn't get it. Yeah. And so on the Hawaiian Islands, you was it? Pretty much the same as the other places that you did. Um, drove uh, some of the vehicles. And yeah, yeah. And I didn't drive any buses or just uh, gas trucks, refueling mm -hmm. planes and and uh, whatever work there was in transportation. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I remember. They raised a lot of pineapples over there, and uh, uh, something else, I don't remember what it was, but I, I think they burned it off. I don't remember what that was. But anyway, we used to go swimming a lot in places where we weren't supposed to be. <laughs> and uh, uh, I had one experience. I, uh, I I kind of got choked and and I didn't know really what the hell was happening, you know, and and uh, I started really fighting the water and pretty soon my knees hit the beach. It was it was in knee dip water and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, of course, I started out in deeper water, but when when I felt my knees hit the sand while I stood up, and I was all right then. <laughs> but I remember that. But uh, I don't remember. I think that was sugar cane that they burned off, but I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I do remember that. Uh, the uh, pineapple fields was all dull, and if they caught a sailor in a pineapple field, he, he was in trouble. Mm -hmm. But I never did get in there. I just went around them. Yeah. Sometimes you have to go around them to get to the beach you wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
So did you enjoy, well, first of all, do you like pineapples while you were there? Is that something you liked and were able to enjoy? No, I, I, I don't ever, ever, ever have any pineapples there. I, uh, I like pineapples, but I really never had a whole lot of pineapples. Uh, we didn't have them at home, and, and uh, I just never did get a taste for them until mm -hmm. later on in my life. Yeah. Uh, what other foods, say when you were on Oahu, uh, were there other foods like um, maybe specific to the Hawaiian Islands that you tried or anything that was interesting to you there? Uh, no, I, I, I can't say the food was any different than what I was used to. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't a different experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, So did you have, was there, um, uh, did you make friends while you were uh, in the service that lasted past the service and maybe became lifelong friends? Oh yeah. Um, one thing, and I just done it the other day, I had a picture, it's about the size of that computer there you got, of the whole company. Mm -hmm. And I um, wrote all the names of everybody on the back of the picture, but we always called everybody by their last name. Mm -hmm. And I don't know their first names. And uh, my wife and, and daughter went to North Carolina one time uh, on a bus trip that was going on, and uh, oh, I forget the name of the town now, but there was one guy that lived there. His name was Ramsey, and I told her, I said, look in the phone book and uh, see if you can find somebody by the name of Ramsey. <laughs> so when Susie got home, she tore four pages out of the phone book and they was all Ramsey. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't have any idea uh -huh. where he was, and, and but uh, I, I just put a frame on that picture the other day. I'm going to hang it in my room. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, I look at that picture now and just wonder uh, how the rest of the guys went. You know, and and well and. Um, one guy, especially if it was from St. Louis, Ray Wilson, uh, we visited uh, even after we got out, you know, and before either, either one of us got married. And uh, But after we got married, um, his kids had always been in the city, you know, and we lived out on a farm Well, they wanted to come out and and stay, so they'd come out and stay for a week at a time, you know, maybe two weeks, and uh, and be out on the farm, you know, and boy, I, they really enjoyed that. And uh, the wife liked having them out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then time or two, uh, our kids would go stay with them for a week in, mm -hmm. in the city, you know. And, and uh, Ray passed away about, oh, seven or eight years ago and but I still stay in touch with his wife mm -hmm. and, and and his kids mm -hmm. uh, those lasting friendships are always good oh yeah well um, we talked a little bit you've already talked a little bit about after you were released from service um, you came back to Illinois and and um, Farm. Um, do you feel like your time in the service taught you lifelong lessons that you've kept all these years and applied to your life? I guess maybe one thing I can remember and through my lifetime when I went any place I didn't like being 
late. I was either on time or I didn't go. Mm -hmm. But I, I was always on time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I learned that in the Navy. Um, but uh, another thing that happened after I got, uh, well, it was just, um, uh, It's just been over a year ago, October the 17th of um, 15, uh, when, I, when I was going to high school, uh, I was fortunate enough that we had a pretty good ball team. Uh, that one year we was 34 and 8, and uh, I scored, uh, I was the first one in the state of Illinois that went over 1,000 points in the season. And uh, last October uh, 17th, uh, they elected me to uh, uh, Illinois Basketball Hall of Fame. And uh, uh, I'm kind of proud of that. That is an accomplishment. Well, do you um, do you think your time when you were in the service influenced you or changed your thinking about the military or war in general? No, not really. But you know when. Uh, of course, I always read the papers, what was going on in World War II, but uh, naturally when I come back home then, I was always interested in what was happening in the Navy, not mm -hmm. especially the Army or Marines, you know, but uh, I was strictly Navy. Sure. Well, do you have any last comments that you would like to share, perhaps for um, uh, folks that might see your your um, interview or listen to it in the future? Is there anything you'd like to tell them, especially maybe the younger generation? I, I, I can't think of anything. Okay. I, uh, I'd have to stop and think. And sure, sure. Well, I would uh, just like to thank you so much for your time, taking time to come and sit with me and chat, and thank you for your service to our country. Thank you.